Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Gist with Girls in Science and Technology. Gist with Gist. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel, Girls in Science and Technology Ghana, and let's learn from our amazing females in science, technology, engineering, and math. Our females in the STEM fields. Please share these videos with all the amazing females out there who are succeeding. Let's encourage our young ones to pursue careers and STEM. Thank you. So, hello, beautiful people. Welcome once again to Gist with Girls in Science and Technology. Gist with Gist. So, on today's show, we have an amazing, intelligent, beautiful lady with us. She is the president of the Ghana Society of Biomedical Engineers. She's a senior lecturer and the pioneering head of the Biomedical Engineering Department in the University of Ghana, Ligon. And we all know her as the National Science and Math Quiz Mistress. Yes, yes, we have Dr. Elsie Ifa Hoffman with us today. Hello, Auntie Elsie. Thank you so, so, so much Hello. for making time to join us today. It's my pleasure. You're welcome to Gist with Gist. <laughs> so today we want to get to know you. We've been seeing you on our screens. I've been watching you. In fact, I'm sure you are one of the reasons why I went into STEM in the first place. Good to know. I'm honored. <laughs> so today we want to, you to share your educational background with us and why you chose this field. All right. Um, so the day from um, class one, I went to Winneba, ATTC demonstration school in Winneba. Mm -hmm. Then I moved on to Kuvrondia when my parents moved there and I went to Nantans and then went on to every girl's secondary school. Okay. I did uh, five years there and got the O levels. After that, I went out to the UK. I went to the UK. I was supposed to be representing Ghana at that school, at the international school. Okay. And then from there, I went on to University of Pennsylvania for oh, my undergraduate okay. degree. Oh, yes. Okay. And that's where I chose to do. I am. Oh. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pen quicker. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. So. That pen. And that's where I chose to do bioengineering. Okay. Uh, the story will <laughs> the story will come later on, but I wound up doing uh, three degrees there, so I did my bachelor's, master's, and then PhD all at Penn in bioengineering. Oh, okay. And then after that, I did a postdoc um, at um, Rangers University before coming back to Ghana in two thousand and one. Oh, okay. Oh. Since then, I've had an opportunity as part of a. a, a, a um, a fellowship program, I have been able to get uh, a certificate in uh, executive uh, business education from uh, uh, Harvard Business School and then also from INSEAD. Yes, wow. so it was part of a, a program, uh, a fellowship program, the United um, International Women's Forum Leadership Foundation program. Yes, wow. so wow. that's the academic bit of me. Yes, now what? When I was in school, in secondary school, I was chosen to be a science student. In those days, the select teachers were teachers from the general arts all the way down, and the teachers would decide which groups of students were went away. Oh. And then everybody expected me to go to medical school. And that's exactly what I was working towards. I was working towards going to medical school. So even when I went outside to the United World College of the Atlantic, I was um, a science student there and I was preparing to go to medical school. Oh, okay. But uh, things changed. When I decided to go to the US, I was advised that you cannot go directly into medical school in the US. There are very few programs like that. And so I had to do something pre-med. And I was given options of schools to apply to. And that was where I saw the description for bioengineering. It sounded very much like something a person would do before going to medical school. And that's how I chose it. So I didn't really know what it was. I just knew the description. 
a said um, application of science, mathematics, and engineering to problems in biology and healthcare. Really beautiful. It sounded good. <laughs> and, and so I decided to go for it. And then when I got into the bioengineering class at Penn, and the activities we were doing, the course projects were just so exciting. I was hooked. I decided I, I, I didn't really want to go to medical school after that because I also knew what the medical students were doing. And I felt what we were doing in our engineering class was a whole lot more exciting than what they were doing. And so I stuck with it. Yes, so that's how I decided to do bioengineering. Okay. Please, can you, can you briefly explain what biomedical engineering is? All right, so I've already given the formal definition, but let me repeat, is the application of science, technology, mathematics, and in fact, all the various types of engineering to address some problems in biology and medicine. Okay, so it's a, it has a very broad scope. So whenever we use our knowledge of science, all the various types of science, our knowledge of mathematics, and our knowledge of uh, fundamental engineering, various types of engineering to solve problems in healthcare okay. and biology, then we are doing biomedical engineering. So um, if I were to talk about the scope, the types of applications that we, we do, you'd be amazed. So uh, you would have many of our members in Ghana here, the most um, recognized discipline of biomedical engineering is clinical engineering because you see our members in the hospitals. Yeah. In the hospitals, they are responsible really for making sure the equipment are in good working order. Um, they actually... Um, take care of the equipment, they manage the equipment, they install the equipment, they service the equipment, they, they do a whole lot of things, but it's really around medical devices in the hospital setting. But our training goes well beyond this. As engineers, we use knowledge um, in the various types of engineers, as I have said, to even design these medical equipment, right? So we design solutions, basically, to problems in healthcare. I personally, my training was in biomaterials and tissue engineering, tissue engineering. So what I would do is um, look at damaged tissues, tissues that have various pathologies, you know, injuries or disease. And the idea is to design replacement tissues, biological tissues to replace what is damaged. So I would use knowledge of chemistry, biology, physics, <laughs> mathematics, certainly, right? Yeah. And uh, even these applications of in um, um, bi um, biochemistry, uh, in order to come up with solutions to problems, new tissues, right? So I would be involved possibly in some even chemical engineering, right? Uh, when we design medical devices, for example, we usually apply our knowledge of electronics. So we may also use our knowledge of uh, computer uh, science, you know, programming. <laughs> software engineering to come up with apps to solve problems in healthcare. If we are to design a whole hospital, we would use knowledge in civil engineering in order to come up with a whole hospital. Yeah. So we are sort of the jack of all trades of the engineers. We use all the knowledge we can find in order to solve problems in healthcare. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Auntie. So then clearly we can see that she is a lecturer. She has taken us too briefly. <laughs> right? Okay. So we know Auntie Elsie as the mistress of the host mistress of National Science and Math Space. Auntie, can you please share with us um, some of your, or should I say one of your most interesting experience when it comes to hosting the uh, National Science and Math Space? Oh, there are so many interesting experiences. I mean, uh, to single an experience out would be too difficult. Uh, maybe, uh, let me just use the last edition, for example. You know, our dear Michael from uh, St. Peter's making us laugh so much with his verses, memory verses from <laughs> the scriptures. <laughs> How can you forget something like that? Yeah. Uh -huh. So I, I do have a lot of fun on the program. Yes. <laughs> So okay, you 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 meet with both the, both the females and the males when it comes to hosting the right? and you are a lecturer too. So from your experience, why do you think females shy away from the STEM fields? 
Oh, there are so many reasons and a lot of research has been done on this, but let me share my experiences of why I think it's the case. First, it has to do with a few role models. Okay, so if you look at certain disciplines in the sciences, if you look at uh, the, particularly the mathematical bit, you know, when it comes to uh, physics, for example, you'll find fewer women there. Mm -hmm. uh, computer science is just as bad. Engineering, oh, terrible, right? And I think the reason is uh, traditionally we've had fewer women in there. And so it's been difficult to um, model your life. If you're a young person, a young girl trying to decide where to go, if you don't know people that look like you, that sound like you, that feel like you mm -hmm. doing those things, it's more difficult to imagine yourself doing something like that. Mm -hmm. And so that is one of the main things I think that uh, makes it difficult for a young girls to decide to go into some of these uh, disciplines. So that's one thing. The other thing is also the way in which it's taught. In engineering, for example, the young ladies who come to join us in engineering, they've come there because they want to make an impact. They want to solve problems. They want to do something to make life better. Yeah. And then you come and sit with us and for the first two years, we only give you equations to solve and so <laughs> uh, It's hard to see the application of what the foundation that is being learned it makes it very difficult for someone to choose to want to be in there. So even those who come in, sometimes there's, an, there's a bit of an attrition because they, they find it difficult to relate to what is being said when they came in there to do uh, the sort of things that actually make an impact in the real world and they are not seeing that happening yet. Yes. Uh, in addition to that, some of the science courses require a lot of attention in terms of um, efforts that you put in. So um, the mathematics, you need to practice. It's not sufficient to just read a book and then say you have mastered a skill. No, you need to practice. It takes an incredible amount of time sometimes to get a concept, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, traditionally, and especially in the past, I'm not sure that it's happening these days so much, but in the past, when two children went to school, a boy and a girl, the boy comes back home, he has all the time to do the practice that is necessary. The girl is expected to immediately go into the kitchen to help out. Yeah. <laughs> and so the amount of time that is necessary uh, to master the skills, sometimes we don't have equal amounts of time on that. Um, there are so many other things. And then the expectations, you know, traditionally, as I said, because of the fewer numbers of women represented in these disciplines, people don't see that. And so even the people around the young girl who is making a decision, they discourage them, including teachers. Sometimes it even happens with teachers, you know. So the expectation, the boy is expected to get into this discipline, uh, take all the time necessary and spend long years preparing for that, the girl has different expectations. The, the girl is expected to finish quickly and go and make a family. And so they think it will take too long. Uh, it's not worth the trouble of staying in there that long just to, to, to be able to do what is necessary. So there are, a lot of, there are a lot of factors that lead to this. I can go on and on. Uh, let me add one last one. Uh, traditionally, even in our textbooks, you know, so you see things like uh, in a physics textbook, and sorry if I keep using physics, that's, <laughs> that's, one, of the, that's one of the subjects I taught myself. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so in the physics textbook, you will see things like uh, a bullet is shot at some velocity, very violent examples. The girls don't relate well to such things. They don't want to be seen such things. You know, if a girl went into uh, sciences thinking they are going to help humanity and then they they are confronted with these kinds of examples. It certainly doesn't help. Yeah. So um, <laughs> there are many reasons why. I think there are many reasons why, but I think more and more we are beginning to see interest as a lot of people are trying to encourage more young ladies into considering careers in science. So uh, how do you think we, we can correct this? I know you, you mentioned mentorship, right? You mentioned mentorship. Yes. Yes. Mentorship is key. It's, it's, it's key. Um, if you are already, if you are a scientist, you are an engineer, and you, you are a woman, I, I feel you should try to bring up the next generation. Because the next generation listening to your story, uh, interacting with you, and realizing that really those of us in these disciplines, we are very much, very, very much like the one 
demands coming up. Mm -hmm. I think it makes it possible for them to imagine themselves in these fields. You know, I tell my mentees, for example, that it's not sufficient to follow me. At one point, you can start by following me. You should wind up working alongside me and then bypass me because the resources that are available to you now are not the same that were available to me when I was coming up. And so the next generation should do even better. And that kind of encouragement challenges our young ladies to see that they can do it and then do even better. So mentorship is, is extremely important. It's extremely important. The other thing is those of us who are in education, I mean, we, we, sh we should do a little better. We should be mindful of some of these uh, expectations that we have of our students. So if you're a science teacher and your young ladies are not doing as well and you tell them, oh, it's okay, it's fine, you'll be okay, and then you expect higher uh, outcomes from the boys, note that you are actually putting the girl at a disadvantage because sometimes it's the encouragement and the challenge that will help them to rise. Uh, and so we can also, as educators, we can also do our part in that uh, area. With regard to family, society in general, it's not so strange for a girl to excel in science, mathematics, and engineering. No, not at all. We are capable of doing it. And so a bit of encouragement from everyone, everyone, the negative comments about people being, you know, uh, I'm sure you've heard it. There's mm -hmm. negative stereotypes about people who go into some fields. Uh, they, they, have to, they have to stop. We should not encourage such things. At all. I, I heard one yesterday. Someone said, um, Oh, Emma, how do you have two kids? I had women who go offshore can't have kids. And I was like, what? We can't have kids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Does the biology change? <laughs> so, like, I'm still trying to understand this, and I'm really going to address this, this issue. <laughs> I was shocked. So that, that's mm. very true. Yes. So, Auntie yes. Elsie, tell us something we don't know about you, something that will surprise us about yourself. Uh, hmm. Let me see. All right. So um, a lot of people see me on TV doing my, my job as quiz mistress, yeah. right? On that job, I'm, I'm known for being uh, impartial, strict, and fair. So they think that's how I am in all aspects of my life. In fact, people come to my department, you know, they come in as my students. They've already heard the stories before they get there. <laughs> they have this idea of me being so strict and unapproachable and they are intimidated even before they see me and I, I don't think I don't think it's right I, I have many good friends who speak with me I mean they, they don't have any issues I have had people come to my office first they will make an appointment spend a long time trying to make sure the time will be right and so on and then they'll come to my office and find my door wide open and they are surprised because they think I should be hiding behind security and <laughs> no so so I am I, I think I'm extremely approachable the ones that usually have trouble with me are those that are trying to do the wrong things if, if you're a student and you are if, <laughs> you're not doing the right things we won't get along uh -huh, because those are simply the principles that I follow but um, if you're doing everything right, I don't see why I, I have to be so difficult to, to approach. So that, that's one thing. <laughs> so I, I messaged her. I don't, I don't know her personally. I see her on TV. Yes, we all see her on TV. But then I messaged her on LinkedIn and she responded, right? So yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how we met. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. So please, what advice do you have for um should i say the young ones looking to go into stem going to the stem fields and even be the young ones who have started in stem all right uh, first of all the fact that you are considering stem means that uh, you're a great person <laughs> it's a it's a wonderful choice the path is not easy but then anything good comes at great sacrifice and hard work so be willing to work really hard. Don't compromise on doing the good things. Mediocrity is not good enough. Strive for excellence. Work really hard. And it does pay off. If you go through the process, if you go through the hard work it takes to get somewhere, your success will be more sustainable. It means you have something that you can keep with you for a longer time. Uh, and 
going into the STEM fields is a great opportunity. It's very rewarding because you actually get to see science at work in real life. Uh, what better way to influence the world? The future world is influenced by us, those of us who are in the sciences and in engineering. So I, it's a great choice. Please stay in there, work hard. It is worth it. It's worth it. Thank you so much, Auntie Elsie, for taking time off your busy schedule. I know you are you're a very busy woman. Thank you so much for making time for us. Um, our lovely viewers, thank you for joining us. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, please do so. And have a lovely day.